Hey everyone, it's me, Rylan. Um, it is February 18th, 2020 at 3.11 p.m. So, as the title suggests, today I am going to talk about um, what it is like being in a relationship with my girlfriend who also identifies as transgender and also has mental illness. Uh, I've wanted to make a video about uh, what it's like both of us having mental illness and being in a relationship, but then I also realized like we're both trans and <laughs> Those are gigantic parts of like our identity and how we move throughout the world. So I was like, why not talk about both? so, um Let's see uh, So for those of you that don't follow my channel or know who the heck I am uh, as I said, I'm Rylan um, and I identify as transgender, uh, gender fluid, and transmasculine, and I know that might sound dramatic to some people, but that's just how I identify. So, yeah, I go by he, him pronouns, and, um, basically just the outward gender expression that I have is extremely fluid. Um, some days I'm wearing, you know, dresses and makeup and wigs because that's how I feel comfortable. I fear... I feel very feminine on those days and then other days I would say like 99% of the time I'm dressed in this manner which I consider to be uh, androgynous or I guess some people would say masculine presenting but I don't really jive with that word it just clothing really doesn't have a gender but I just I don't know I don't feel comfortable saying that um, and as far as my history uh, and my trans identity, I have been out as trans for five years. For five years, I was on testosterone for two years and ten months, so basically three years. And I have had top surgery. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, that's that. I've been off of hormones for. Uh, it's gonna be. I think like four years soon so that's really crazy um yeah so that's that's my gender identity my girlfriend on the other hand so I was born a uh, female at birth and my girlfriend identifies as um, MTF which means that she was assigned male at birth but identifies as female so MTF and FTM so, um, just like a brief history of our relationship, we have been dating for consecutively uh, a little over a year. Um, we lived together, and then before that, um, we took a break and we were together for, I don't know, 10 months or something. So, we've known each other a while and, you know, had a, had just like a brief break in between, but we've you know, we've essentially been dating for a little under two years. So, um, we currently live with each other, uh, and we lived with each other before. So, yeah, that's what's going on. So, I'll start with the mental health part first. Um, the reason I'm making this video mostly is because I was in a group therapy, uh, session, a group therapy group, uh, a while ago like in the summer and um, it was someone's first day in the program and one of the first questions that they asked was you know they were ready to enter the dating world and they said when is it too soon to um, you know disclose your mental health status to a potential partner you know is there a time that is too soon should I do it and it was actually really interesting because that group is usually pretty silent, but a lot of people piped in and had stuff to say, which I thought was really interesting that all of these people with different backgrounds of different mental illnesses had something to say. And the general consensus was like, don't say anything until you feel comfortable with this human being. Um, and that's simply because there's just so much stigma behind mental health and you know, there's a lot of shitty people out there that aren't going to give you the time of day if you tell them, like, you have bipolar or you have schizophrenia or you struggle with anything, anxiety, PTSD, whatever. People are just going to label you and say, this person is crazy. I don't want to deal with it. You know, there's stupid stigmas of, like, that you're going to murder them in their sleep or something. Like, just straight up ignorance. And 
I have put myself in situations, unfortunately, where I believe I disclosed uh, too soon and potentially, I say potentially because who knows what could have happened, um, that I potentially could have, um, I don't know, like ruined a relationship because I disclosed my, my status of mental health too soon. But you know, obviously those people ran away and they're assholes, so we weren't meant to be together. But personally, me and my history uh, with mental illness is, you know, if you watch my channel, I have literally an entire playlist of, I think, 25 videos called Mental Health um, because I struggle with so many mental illnesses. And I'm not going to name all of them. I think, I always lose count. It's either like eight or 11. I don't know. But I'll just name the main ones that affect uh, my dynamic with my girlfriend. So I struggle with. PTSD, borderline personality disorder, an eating disorder, bipolar, uh, and generalized anxiety and body dysmorphia disorder. So I would say those are the main ones that kind of just, I mean, obviously like affect my life on a daily basis, but like can definitely affect the way in which I interact with her in our relationship. Um, and I also have a extensive trauma history so that can obviously get in the way of some stuff um her on the other hand i'm not going to go into too much detail about her because it is not my place and it is not my story to tell uh but i'll just talk about the main thing that she struggles with which is major depressive disorder um so Basically, I guess the two ways that I will d differentiate in the beginning of how our illnesses affect like each of us individually uh, is with her depression, she uh, struggles with depression almost on a daily basis. Uh, for her that manifests in sleeping a lot, um, you know, not having an appetite, sometimes it's difficult for her to shower, um, Suicidal ideation uh, comes along in that territory and just, you know, basically everything that you would think comes along with depression is something that she struggles with at times. I, on the other hand, because of the plethora of symptoms that I have, a lot of different things happen. Um, and again, I'm not going to say anything else that she struggles with because it's not my place, but I can speak freely about my shit. Uh, <laughs> Uh, basically, you know, with borderline and bipolar, both of those uh, disorders um, have mood swings as part of their symptoms. So that's something that really affects my day to day life and interacting with the world around me. Um, also, because of my PTSD, uh, due to trauma, I have, um, I used to have really bad panic attacks, but due to a lot of extensive work in therapy, I've been able to get those under control, um, but I still deal with a lot of dissociation. That's probably one of my main symptoms that PTSD uh, affects me um, because I realized I can dissociate like just due to being stressed out. Um, I always thought it was just due to like trauma memories and being triggered and activated by something, but I realized like just being in a room full of people can caused association um, and that also falls in line with social anxiety um, my eating disorder can you know leak into our relationship uh, and that pairs along with my body dysmorphia because uh, you know I view my body differently than I guess what it really looks like which whatever but it is what it is that's what, that's what people tell me that's what the DSM says um, so those are the main things that like affect how I interact with her in our relationship. So kind of going back to the beginning ish, cause I'm not going to get that deep into it is we both entered our relationship knowing that the other person struggles with mental health straight up. Did we know how severe it was in the other person? No, no. Um, but that's okay because the main thing that I want to say is we have learned over this past you know concise year together and the time before is how to support each other and kind of just 
how lucky we are and how specific our relationship is given that we are both not neurotypical human beings. There's a certain amount of understanding that comes along with people that have mental illnesses and people that don't. Um, you know, even though I don't struggle uh, with depression to the degree that she does because I have been depressed, I understand it. Do I understand to the degree, again, that she does on a daily basis? No. But I can try and be empathetic and sympathetic to what she's going through. Just as she doesn't have a lot of the diagnoses that I do, we do share some other stuff in common, but I mean, she doesn't have borderline and she doesn't have bipolar. So understanding uh, the mood swings that I have, that's not her personal experience, but because, I mean, she's dating me, but also like we live together. She sees all of that up close uh, in, in person. So there's just basically the way that our relationship works is that there's a lot of understanding and give and take that has to happen within our relationship in order to support each other, but also to be able to protect ourselves and, uh, you know, be able to heal separately. We're both in therapy. We both work very hard at self care and trying to better ourselves and deal with the symptoms that come along with our mental illnesses. But you can be in as much therapy as you want. It doesn't mean that your problems are going to go away. Therapy is so you can learn strategies to deal with your mental illnesses or whatever problems you're dealing with. But I've been in therapy for most of my life and like obviously my bipolar isn't going to go away. I just am learning skills to deal with them. So the interesting thing about our relationship is even though we don't have the same lived experiences, uh, really recently we have started to learn and start to put up boundaries of what, how much intervening should you do when the other person is struggling? Because I'll freely admit in the beginning of our relationship, um, a lot of the focus was on me and what I was dealing with. And she really got pushed to the side of what struggles she had. Uh, this is not an excuse, but for context, what was going on is I was in an extremely um, intense modality of therapy called EMDR, which is a trauma therapy where essentially you are, um, it's kind of like exposure therapy where you are reliving the events of your trauma. And it ended up being way too much for me. Other symptoms and illnesses started popping up due to the EMDR and Basically, shit was a goddamn mess. And that was the beginning of our relationship. That was her getting to know me, of having fucking panic attacks and dissociative episodes and everything else that came along with that that I am not going to talk about. So she was there for me, though. She was there for me. She loved me through it, and she supported me. And we're now at the point where being over a year into our relationship, and this is talking now, like over... The year we had our anniversary in um, in January, and like I said, it's February. Was it in January? Yeah, February. Uh, is that we're starting to put up boundaries of how much can I support uh, my loved my loved one um, without impeding their necessity for autonomy. Um, so if she is going through a depressive episode, how responsible should I be for trying to help her get out of it? Should I be pushing her to take a shower? Should I be telling her not to sleep? Should I have any say in what meds she's on? And that's kind of something that we haven't really done until this point in our relationship because we're just realizing like, a lot of healing has to do with autonomy. It is extremely important to have a support system and luckily that is what we have. If I need to cry, I can cry in my bedroom or if I need to cry, she's there for me. But we're really learning that balance of how do we support the other person when they are going through things? How do you support yourself when you're going through things? And then what do you do when you are both struggling? What does that look like?
because that is very hard and that's what makes our relationship interesting and I think that's what makes our relationship so much stronger because neurotypical people are not going to have to deal with someone that is like suicidal. They may not know how to deal with that. They may not, you know, have the tools equipped to deal with mood swings. And even though that's not something that she personally experiences, the mood swings in the way that I do, she is able to have that empathy uh, and sympathy and more importantly, patience to deal with what I'm going through. Does it mean that she understands it? No, but she's there for me and that's extremely important. So it really is kind of just a push and pull, but mostly a matter of balance of how do we support the other person without hurting ourselves. Um, so moving along to our transgender identities, um, uh, she has been on hormones for seven months now. She's on estrogen, so hey, good for her. Um, so yeah, she's embarking on that period of taking hormones, uh, doing HRT, and really just coming into her own of her trans feminine identity, which me having been there of coming out as trans, um, it's either five or six years ago. It was in 2015. So a long time ago. It was just a long time ago. Um, it's interesting because, you know, I've been there. I've had my experiences of being on uh, hormone replacement therapy and being on testosterone for almost those three years and the experiences that I had. Um, those are very specific of like, you know, I feel very lucky that I'm able to be there side by side for her in this journey because this shit is confusing. Coming to terms and deciding to embrace your gender identity is an extremely overwhelming but like amazing thing to do. But it's nice to be able to offer her guidance, like, you know, to be able to understand like going shopping for clothing for your newly affirmed gender identity is extremely stressful. Not only does that shit cost money, but you are trying to figure out what your style is. You're trying to figure out what feels comfortable on your body. And that might result in dysphoria. Um, and I'm glad that I personally have that lived experience to be able to understand she's not feeling comfortable in her body right now. You know, she's still struggling with this because I've been there. The whole time that I was on testosterone, I was maybe gendered correctly like eight times. And it's funny because I'm gendered more often uh, as male now that I've been off of testosterone for almost four years. So that doesn't really make sense, but it is what it is. Um, I always do this. If you guys don't watch my videos, I'm like blind as a bitch. So I'm always like looking at the time to make sure that I'm not wasting your life and talking too long. Um, but anyway, so that's really cool to be able to like lend advice uh, and give support of, you know, kind of what's to come, especially me living as a female for all of those years of my life and kind of giving her like a, a heads up of like, this is what's to come, like have fun with mood swings and you know, of unfortunately being sexualized and the sexual harassment that she's going to have to eventually deal with because unfortunately that is part of being a woman. Um, so I feel like we're really lucky in a lot of ways that we are able to identify and support the other person's circumstances. Like I don't need advice, you know, about being on testosterone. Been there, done that. Um, so right now it's just kind of being on the journey with her and trying to help her as much as I can. But again, having that vernacular of like, I'm feeling really dysphoric today, uh, of lamenting over the fact, you know, I didn't get misgendered, uh, or I did get misgendered today and it really hurt. Or the time that she got gendered correctly the first time was like such an exciting moment to be there in her life. And I'm glad that I get to experience that with her and know like what that feels like. Whereas I feel that if I was not uh, a trans individual, that would be a victory for her and I would be very excited, but like I understand what that feels like. So I think that's really cool and I think that's really beautiful. And you know, overall I'm just excited to see 
her life and where everything goes. But I guess what I'm trying to say is in terms of our relationship, we're really lucky that we're able to lean on each other and use each other's experiences to help the other person. So even though things are different, as I said, my diagnoses are different than hers and affect me in a completely different way than hers do, I've already been on hormones and I've been, uh, not secure, but I've been more um, solid in my gender identity than she has because it's been like 10 months since she has like fully declared that she is a beautiful woman. Um, so even though our experiences are different, we are able to support each other. And I think if we were neurotypical or one of us was neurotypical and one of us struggled with mental illness or one of us was trans and the other wasn't, that would put a completely different dynamic on our relationship that quite frankly, I don't know if it would work. The way that my symptoms manifest can be extremely overwhelming, obviously not only for me, but for another person to deal with and for us to live together and have to be constantly uh, surrounded by the other person's illness can really take a toll on you. And it takes a very specific person and it does not take someone to be mentally ill in order to support you if you have mental health issues. But the number one thing that I take is patience. Number one above all, patience, but then also compassion. If you can't have empathy because you've been there, that's fine. But you have to be patient with the other person. And I am very lucky that I have found someone who is patient with me, that loves me through it, that even through all of my you know, illogical thinking or mood swings that I might have is still able to support and love me um, and not judge me and tell me that I'm being dramatic or calling me crazy or, you know, other derogatory mean words because there's just a certain amount of respect and understanding that we have that has gotten us through this year and, you know, all the time before that. So, um, yeah, this isn't like a self-help video. I'm, I can't really give advice, uh, you know, on whether or not you should disclose to someone about your mental health. Um, but I will cap this off and say that from my personal experiences, again, not giving advice, I have found that, um, cause I basically like told everyone right away, like I have mental illness and I'm probably going to become really clingy with you. Going back, I don't know that that's the way that I would have approached things. But that's how it happened and I lost people because of that but they just weren't the right match for me and this person who's sleeping in the next room is the love of my life and I'm so lucky that our relationship started with a place of honesty because from that honesty grew support and love and without that me specifically without being able to have that high level of support I, a relationship just wouldn't work for me. So I'm really lucky to have her. And yeah, it's just all about balance. So that's just a glimpse into my relationship with someone who happens to struggle with mental illness and also identifies as transgender. Uh, we're an interesting pair. So uh, yeah, that's what YouTube is about, right? Being able to share your experiences and hear someone else's life and uh, that's what I did. So I hope you guys all have an amazing day and thank you so much. Uh, if you're still with me and watching this video, you deserve a cookie um, for sticking it out this long. So thank you again and uh, I'll see you guys soon.